So my name is Don Contreras. I was born in Guatemala, lived there until I was 18 years old. Um, I have been given a, amazing opportunities in a big part because of the web. And it's uh, great for me, but it's incredibly unfortunate that I am the exception. Um, so I've worked in technology, and today I work as a social media manager for Samsung Electronics. Um, but every day I, I wonder how many people out there we could have making a difference, not just here in the US, but wherever they may go. Um, so I'm going to be talking about this concept of the digital native, which I'm sure all of you have heard. Um, everybody here is a digital native or a digital immigrant. Um, whether you like those terms or not, it's you were either born and you had those things for you to access, computers, the internet, or you're somebody that adopted it. So I'm going to do, you're a little bit older. Um, but what about all these people that were born in a digital world, but only recently discovered it? So their nativeness did not come from age, but from access. So you have a 22 year old that has found a computer within the last year. Um, so these people, I, I'm giving them a name, and they're the digital newcomers. And the difference is that they're seeing everything that we've been seeing for 15 years, 20 years, in the last year. Um, and that opens a whole bunch of opportunities that, that we, don't, we, don't, we can't even comprehend, because we already have a lot of education and knowledge. And, um, so who are, what is Latin America? It's, it's a region. It's not a country, first of all. It's not Mexico. It's not a lot of other things. It's as diverse as Europe. Um, I'm a Guatemalan. I personally do not call myself a, a Latino or a Hispanic much because I didn't grow up thinking that way. I grew up thinking I'm a Guatemalan, just like people here grew up thinking I'm from the U.S. Um, but Latin Americans are online. It's a, it's a myth that we are not, and, and it's a myth that, that no one knows what it is, but the fact is that there's not enough. Um, Pre-create is a big deal. 80% of Telefonica, uh, which is a telecom in Latin America, 80% uh, of their customers are prepaid. None of us understand that because none of us are prepaid, but that, that talks about how, how people are starting to access, to be able to communicate and get online. They're losing the digital accent, so they're getting good at being online. Um, unfortunately, it's only 30% of them, and I'm one of them. And I think that's incredibly sad, but at the same time, it, it, it's an opportunity, and that's why I'm here to talk about some of the exciting things, but there's also challenges. Poverty, 25% of Latin Americans, less than $2 a day. Um, I can't even understand that. Um, in Guatemala, the average person makes $7. Not an hour, but a day. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, there's inequality, so we have a, a lower class, a high class, no middle class. Uh, crime and violence, where I come from, what, the, the violence statistics are just impossible for me to even explain because it's just shootings every single day. Uh, kidnappings, things like that. And then you have geography, so people are far away. Censorship, WordPress.com, sorry, not allowed in many countries. Uh, financing, you don't have all these VCs. Uh, political carelessness, they simply don't care about educating people and getting them online. Because it's better to keep the, the ones that are above on top and let's forget about everybody else. Um, so this, this digital divide, which Kenty mentioned, is, is not just digital, but it's also social, and it's economic. Um, and it really crushes dreams of things like what, what Kenty was talking about, about everybody being equal, or what I like to call a class neutralizer, where there's no classes. Um, that's not there today, uh, but that might be where we're headed. Uh, so here's a comparison. Facebook users in the U.S., 102 million. That's more Facebook users than total internet users in these countries. That messed up. Uh, the freaking pickle has more fans than there are users online in two of the most progressive and developed countries in Latin America. The pickle. <laughs> so, 8% of people in the world are Latin Americans. I'm included in that. Here's where I start to get excited. 9% of the Latin population is from Latin America. 12% of the mobile population is from Latin America. So those numbers don't seem that big, but it, it means that we're, we're getting online and we're getting access. And in 1998, it was only 1%, today we're 30%. So suddenly that 30% sounds way better. Um, and I'm excited about that. So who, who are these 30%? Uh, forget everything you know and imagine that you've never been online, you've never, been a computer, never seen a computer, and maybe you have access to regular mail. Maybe. Um, 
And then a year later, find a cell phone, SMS, prepaid. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you are on chat roulette. That is crazy. In one year, um, that's a big deal. It, 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 we are, it's amazing how being online, people can get it. And in a matter of months, of a year, they can be on Facebook and then all of a sudden they're sharing pictures. And people that didn't have a voice and that were totally powerless, all of a sudden have one. Um, they're highly social. 82% use webmail. According to Facebook, 82% use social media. I don't know what they define as social media, but that's what Facebook says. 73% use Messenger or, or other IM clients. 60% on a social network, 55% upload movies. These are, again, the people that are online, those 30%. And actually, what, what Kelly was saying about Latinos here, it's the same in Latin America. More bloggers in Mexico and Brazil than we have here in the US. And that's, that, it means something. Uh, citizen journalism. This word here gets a lot of, oh, what is citizen journalism? If you had no free press, this would be a much bigger deal, and that's why it is in other countries, and it is in Latin America, because all of a sudden we can bring up things like not just earthquakes, but also things that the media <coughs> hides and doesn't want the world to know. Uh, all of a sudden we can do that. You stream it, or, or TwinPig, or whatever. And, and a big website that I really want everybody to go check out is hablacentro.com, my friend Cara Andrade, who, who should have been here, or we're going to Skype her in, but we couldn't figure it out. Um, she, she, we couldn't get her uh, to come in there or whatever. But go to hablacentro.com and people in Latin America, a taxi driver who's never seen the internet can go on his phone, send a text message, and it'll pop up on Habla Centro and the other digital hubs. So if he's in Guatemala, it'll go to hablaguate.com. And there's, there's five of these uh, digital news hubs is what they call them. Um, so and if you want to try it right now, send a text message to there. And depending on what you say, it might not appear, but the thing is that people have access to tell the world something, um, even if it might not seem meaningless. Uh, meaningful here, maybe an explosion somewhere, might be really important for somebody in another country to find out. Uh, next one, change agents. Um, this is a really good one, and me as a, as, a, as a blogger, I get really excited about this. There was a, a couple that went into a pizza hut, and because they were gay, they were treated really, really badly. Um, thanks to blogs, Pizza Hut had to completely change their, their uh, customer service policy. And in a matter of, I think, 48 hours, they truly transformed the, how they did things. Because a blogger said something, and then every single blogger, this is Costa Rica. Uh, the same thing happened with KFC. A, a blogger went into a KFC, and he was called an imbecile. Uh, he blogged about it, the next day KFC had to go and say, hey, we're sorry. This doesn't happen in Latin America. Here, oh yeah, companies say sorry all the time. In Latin America, what? <laughs> Customer service, they don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, and then you see a few other examples, like Free Venezuela. In Venezuela, there's been a lot of problems with censorship. Um, a huge problem with censorship. Just go find Free Venezuela and you'll find out more. And also in Colombia, the Nomas Farc, the Farc are a guerrilla group. And, and through a Facebook group, they, they put huge marches together. Uh, they're doing a lot of things. The uh, Mexican government is talking about uh, hiding Twitter from everybody. Uh, and so the, the Mexican Twitter community is going online and saying, hey, enough of this. Let's, let's not do stupid things. 